guys good morning good afternoon good evening i greet you all according to your time i remain your humble girl anointed lady tv if you are new to this channel you are highly welcome and if you have been watching me you've not subscribed please today kindly hit that red button where the row subscribe and put on the notification bell the essence of that bell is whenever i upload any video you will be notified to so all my returning subscribers thank you very much for coming back to check on your baby girl and to my new subscribers you are officially welcome to this family please to be before you this afternoon to present this historic budget. But before I do, I'd like to acknowledge in our midst the presence of the Deputy Governor of Edo State, the Right Honorable Comrade Philip Schwebel, the Speaker. Speaker Edo State House of Assembly, the Right Honorable Marcos Onubung, and other honorable members who are here present. The State Party Chairman of our party, the People's Democratic Party, Honorable Anthony Azebemi. The Secretary to the Government of Edo State, Barrister Saudian Ogie. The Head of Service, Barrister Antonio Kungboa. The Chief of Staff, Mr. Ethan Uzamiri, the Commissioner for Budget, Honorable Osemomo Omorogbe, and the Commissioner for Finance, Honorable Joseph Eboibe. The Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members of this Distinguished House of Assembly, Gentlemen of the Press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. As I present the 2021 Appropriation Bill, let me start by first thanking God Almighty for making it possible for us to witness today. I also want to appreciate Mr. Speaker and members of this Honorable House for the robust relationship that has continued between the executive and the legislature. This year, 2020, has been a very remarkable one in the annals of the history of mankind and for Nigeria. In March this year, the coronavirus pandemic hit our nation. The devastating public health and economic consequences which followed its trail has created a lot of hardship and despair, which is one of the factors that snowballed into the NSAS protest we recently witnessed. These incidents, unfortunately, have left us with several deaths in the states and in the nation. Mr. Speaker, can I crave your indulgence that we all rise and observe a one minute silence in honor of all of those who've lost their lives this year as a result of this crisis? <laughs> May their souls rest in peace. Amen. Today, I am presenting to you the first budget of my second term in office, which comes right after a very hard-won electoral victory. The election, which was significant, will go into our history books as one of the most engaging elections in the history of this country. We are proud today that we have made an indelible mark on our journey towards our democratic consolidation as a country. 
and I would like at this juncture to congratulate members of this House for your steadfastness and determination to ensure the survival of our democracy. I stand before you today with a renewed mandate from Edo people who fought assiduously for my victory at the September 29th polls. With this new charge, I am not unmindful of the need to build on the achievements recorded in the last four years and forge a path for the realization of our shared vision to make Edo great again. I therefore rededicate myself to providing the people with the leadership which they deserve. There is no doubt whatsoever that without the steadfastness, uh, support, and loyalty of this House, it would have been very difficult to remove the disruptive influence of Godfathers in our politics and our democracy. I assure you that the sacrifices of the members of the Seventh Assembly will not be in vain. The coronavirus pandemic has done tremendous harm across the world and has redefined the way we live, work, and play, and continues to have rever reverberating effects on our socioeconomic life as a people and also as a government. We are now gradually adjusting to the new realities of the times. These times are now called the new normal which means that we have to restructure our systems, policies, plans, and processes in line with the new reality. This therefore calls for the retooling of our workforce and deploying technology to, em to embrace the change that is sweeping through the world and our dear country. Technology, human capital, and innovation will play critical roles in the new scheme of things within government and the larger economy. We are building the workforce of the future in a door to attend to these new challenges. We have no doubt that we shall overcome these challenges if we emphasize and invest in our people, particularly our youths, and redesign a government that is responsible and responsive to their needs. Once we can redesign government and the bureaucracy to focus more on providing services efficiently to the people, we will unlock the innate energies, creativity, and innovation of our land and our people. However, it is imperative to review some of what transpired in the outgoing year within the context of the challenges we faced. Notwithstanding the onslaught of the coronavirus pandemic and its resultant economic impact, we were able to record some progress in a number of key areas. Mr. Speaker, the 2020 appropriation which you graciously approved was a very hopeful one, which anticipated meaningful macroeconomic growth and fiscal stability. Against that expectation, we made extensive plans for the year. However, unforeseen circumstances such as the coronavirus pandemic and its debilitating impact on, on economies across the world impacted on our ability to deliver on a number of projects because of the reduction in revenue and the do, do, uh, downturn in economic activities due to unplanned shutdowns, lockdowns, and curfews. Despite these challenges, we were able to, within the time frame and resources available, consolidate on a number of our legacy projects, especially in the areas of sports development, industrialization, infrastructure development, healthcare, and social services, amongst others. The outbreak of the corona virus pandemic compelled us to prioritize and upgrade our healthcare infrastructure and workforce to respond to the challenge of the pandemic. Even though we had started to revamp our primary healthcare system and recalibrated the specialist, Edo Specialist Hospital, more work, was, more work was needed to bring the entire system up to a level that was able to withstand the shocks from the unprecedented hospitalizations 
and other health challenges that came with confronting a public health emergency such as we had. Government offices, schools, markets, even this House of Assembly was shut down and curfews imposed for extended periods as part of our response to this pandemic. We were unable to host the 20th National Sports Festival, which was to hold in April 2020, even though we had expended large sums of money in rebuilding and refurbishing the sporting infrastructure required and also in preparing our youths. However, we are pleased that we are still able to make some progress in some other areas despite these challenges. Projects targeted at driving industrialization, such as the Edo State Modular Refinery Project and the CCTEC Osioma Power Plants, are ready for commissioning as work on them progressed. These projects reinforce our commitment to work more with the private sector investors to deepen development and open up our economy for productivity and industrialization. In spite of the uncertainties which almost overwhelmed different governments across the world, with judicious application of our scarce resources, we were able to continue running government and paying salaries. In 2021, the Make a Do Great Again mega budget, which I am presenting to you today, has been crafted, taking into consideration the new fiscal and macroeconomic realities which we currently face. Mr. Speaker, let me place on record the tremendous assistance and support which this House of Assembly provided us as we navigated the challenges of this outgoing year. Following the advice of the Federal Ministry of Finance, we had to revise the 2020 budget, taking into consideration the new macroeconomic realities. And I want to put it on record that this House was very, very supportive in that effort. Performance in 2019 fiscal year. The global economy declined by 4% in 2019 relative to the 4.2% and 5.2% growth which was recorded in 2017 and 2018 respectively. This performance was driven by a synchronized slowdown across economies, triggered largely by prolonged trade tensions between the two largest economies in the world, China and the United States of America, and also events like Brexit. On the domestic front, the Nigerian economy grew at an average of 2.2% during the same period, mainly driven by a modest expansion in the oil sector. The International Monetary Fund recently downgraded global growth rates projections in 2020 to a 4.4% contraction, which was caused mainly by the negative impact of the coronavirus pandemic on businesses and livelihoods, especially in the first quarter of 2020 and the uncertain protracted recovery path. For Nigeria, GDP growth in the first quarter of 2020 was slower but positive at 1.9% year on year, which has been the weakest growth since the third quarter of 2018. This was as a result of COVID-19. The oil sector also grew modestly. The non-oil sector dipped by minus 6% year on year from 1.6% growth for the prior quarter, driven mainly by sharp deterioration in manufacturing, trade, and real estate sectors. As the lockdown and other restrictions have gradually been eased since the last quarter of 2020, we anticipate that this last quarter will witness a better performance than the subsequent two quarters. What is the outlook for 2021 fiscal year? In 2021, the IMF projects that a 1.7% growth for the Nigerian economy as a worst case scenario. 
However, the consensus is that our economy is likely to grow at a rate of 3% in the financial year 2021. The, this pace of recovery will, however, depend on the development and the large-scale clinical application of the COVID-19 vaccine, and we thank God that the announcement was made yesterday that a vaccine has now been found, and that the length of lockdowns and how quickly other sectors that are mostly affected uh, restart. Meanwhile, recovery in the oil sector will be limited by Nigeria's commitment to producing 1.4 billion million barrels per day, excluding condensates, instead of the normal 1.8 million barrels we used to produce. This was in accord with the OPEC cuts, which we have agreed on. We expect that the continued recovery in the price of crude oil will, however, mitigate the impact of our production cuts. The non-oil sector recovery will depend on how fast the, we can restore the disruptions in the agricultural chain supply and how quickly investments and consumption expenditure will make a rebound in governments, corporates, and households. While the fiscal and monetary stimulus package announced so far are keeping households and small businesses in a recovery mode, we expect that this, scale, this should be scaled up in the year 2021 if we have to accelerate the pace of our recovery. Review of the year 2020, COVID-19 realities. As I remarked earlier, the COVID-19 pandemic dealt a devastating blow on the economy of Nigeria, like that of many other developing countries, dropping their revenue projections to an all-time low. Edo State was no exception. These developments severely affected the livelihoods of many of our citizens. It is important to stress, however, that despite the problems and challenges, a do state government did not lay off any worker. We adopted far-reaching measures, which have been adjudged by some, uh, uh, as by, which has been adjudged by some, as some of the most responsive and comprehensive across the country. So far. Edo, has record, Edo State has recorded 2,654 deaths, confirmed, sorry, confirmed cases, with 108 mortalities. Our response from when the first case was reported was based on data and a proactive strategy. The data generated provided a good base to plan and project measures to be taken to control the pandemic within the state. Which, and this led to the implementation of our response strategy. We constituted a COVID-19 response team, which I chaired. We commissioned an epidemiological survey that provided the state with a curve to predict the different stages of the virus, of the virus's spread, and a pathway for response. The Edo State COVID-19 team response operated an emergency operation center, EOC, with six pillars, namely communication, incidents management, manpower, security, logistics, and facilities. We trained over 4,200 frontline health workers and provided them with life insurance and hazard allowances. And with that, we were able to screen over 500,000 of our citizens, and we've tested over 17,000 persons in Edo State. With our limited resources and contributions from the federal government, donor agencies, and well-meaning citizens like you, Edo State now has five PCR testing facilities for COVID-19 and 300 bed capacity isolation centers spread across different health facilities in the state. The Stella Basanger Hospital has over 42 bed intensive care units and 156 bed holding facility. UBTH has a 48 bed ICU equipped isolation center. And with the remaining um, isolation beds spread, spread over Iroa Specialist Hospital, Auchi General Hospital, and Ogbe Nursing Homes in Jerry Benin City.
we led the way in enforcement of what is now known as partial lockdown, which allows for sub for substance of the local economy for sustenance of the local economy, while non-essential businesses are shut. This hybrid model was later adopted nationwide. It is on record that Edo State was the first state in Nigeria to adopt compulsory wearing of face masks. These measures were in addition to the curfew, school closure, mandatory provision of health and hygiene gears for hand washing in public places, and restriction of gatherings of people in public spaces. All of these measures largely assisted in moderating the impact of this virus on our state. However, the economic hardship caused by COVID-19 has been severe, and in spite of the succor and assistance which we provided as we embarked on the distribution of relief materials in phases, partnering with churches, traditional rulers, and community organizations in reaching over 250,000 vulnerable households, the impact is, has still been severe. Our emphasis was on the most vulnerable persons in our society, including orphan, orphanages, people living with disabilities, the elderly, internally displaced persons, returnees, and other vulnerable groups, vulnerable groups in our communities. In the area of education, because we were forced to shut down our schools for an extended period, we devised innovative ways to engage our children and ensure that they continue to learn even while at home. Owing to the reforms which we had commenced through the Edo Best Basic, Edo, Edo Basic Education Sector Transformation Program, which we term Edo Best, we were able to transit, transition to learning using Edo Best at Home platform. Working with our partners and, tele, and telecom companies and utilizing our Edo Best technology platform, vid, uh, virtual classrooms were created and teachers were able to teach children while they were at home. This, our response through Edo Best at Home initiative has been applauded globally and it has earned Edo State an uh, the award, <coughs> excuse me, uh, uh, earned Edo State an award as one of the five top education accelerator countries in Africa, in the league of Egypt, Rwanda, Mozambique, and Sierra Leone. Edo State was the only state in that category. The others were countries. At the secondary education level, we are utilizing the, 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 the learnings and experience which we have gained from the Edo Best structure to restructure and revamp our senior secondary schools. Training of teachers is the key to educational reform. I am pleased to inform you that just yesterday, the National Council of Colleges of Education, NCCE, has given approval for the establishment of the Edo State College of Education with three campuses in Abudu, Igwebe, and Afuze, catering for the three senatorial districts of the state. I must also thank this house for having earlier passed a bill into law for the establishment of this institution. Our focus on technical and vocational education and training, TVET, got a major boost this year. The newly built Government Science and Technical College, DSTC, is in operation and its students are proving to be worth the investments we have made in that institution. We now have representations representation in the national TVET competitions and fairs, a trend that was not the case before now. Technical education indeed is taking its place as a key pillar in our quest for industrialization. Also, the federal government has approved the establishment of a federal college of education, technical, to train teachers in technical subjects. The school will commence operation in a cadolo, the premises of the defunct College of Education, the Cadolo, very early next year. As for tertiary education in the, educa in the agricultural sector, I am happy to inform this honorable house that the restructured Edo State College of Agriculture and Natural Resources with three campuses in Igwerehi 
Agene Bode Anoromi will admit its first set of students in early 2021. We are at the verge of completing the recru recruitment of fresh staff to commence academic activity at the institutions, all of who are well qualified and adequately motivated to position this school as a foremost college of agriculture in Nigeria, that is, purpose built to provide critical manpower and expertise to support our revolutionary drive in agriculture. There is an urgent need to rethink university education globally, to realign it with the realities of the new world. In this regard, we have set up a visitation panel to the Ambrus Ali University Ekwama to investigate the affairs of the institution with a view to reposition it for greater relevance and more effectiveness. We are pleased to inform you, Mr. Speaker, that, we have, that the performance of the Edo State Polytechnic, Usain, under the, its new management, is quite impressive. And we will be putting more resources to train badly needed manpower in that institution to support and sustain our initiatives, particularly in, as we go into more urban and regional planning initiatives. Edo State University, Yamo, continues to grow in leaps and bounds even as we continue to explore more avenues to sustain the high standards which the school has already set. Mr. Speaker, in the area of job creation, though the COVID-19 pandemic caused serious shocks in the economy, we did not relent in our quest in facilitating the process to get Edo people to create wealth. This came through the numerous job creation opportunities that the pandemic threw at us. In this regard, the Edo State Skills Development Agency, Edo Jobs, which has now been formally set up with a new law, which you graciously approved recently, has engaged in the training of young people and other categories of job seekers to become more gainfully employed. Much of these was done in robust partnership with the private sector, who have played a huge role in the upskilling of our youths to compete favorably with their peers globally. With an initial target to create 200,000 jobs, we have crossed the 150,000 mark at the start of 20, the year 2020. Though the COVID-19 pandemic slowed the pace of our job creation and skill development initiatives, we were able to train our people on how best to take advantage of new products and services that came along with the pandemic. As a result, we trained thousands of youths to make hand, sanit hand sanitizers, soaps, soaps, face masks, face shields in commercial quantities. This was done alongside with the traditional schemes and programs of the Skill Development Agency, which include registration, job matching, and skill acquisition and entrepreneurship development. We have struck new partnerships with more technical firms which have paved the way for our youths to acquire highly sought after skills in technology and innovation, including data sciences, cloud computing, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and others. In the outgoing year, the Edo Creative Hub has expanded the scope of its offerings to attract Africa Magic, one of Africa's biggest production outfits. This resulted in the shooting of a new television series in Edo State, which is now being shown on DSTV. Most of the cast and crew in this show were drawn from Edo State. This bears testimony to the talent of our youth, which we will continue to give vent with more impactful projects targeting the creative industry. I also like to mention the expansion of our production center, which is on course, even, even though it may have apparently suffered some setbacks in the outgoing year. But in the year 2020, we're expanding the production center to double its capacity. Sports development. The National Sports Festival, which was built to commence in April, was postponed but we are confident that the event will hold before the end of this year. 
The Edo Sports Commission expectedly worked round the clock to prepare our athletes for this competition. The imposing Samuel Obamudia Stadium will play host to the competition, but we are glad to announce that we have five other mini stadia that have been completed to serve the tournaments as well. These are located in secondary schools and will serve as a fulcrum for the resurgence of grassroots sports in the state, as they are well equipped to host community sporting events. Industrialization. Our industrialization policy is targeted at opening up the space for investments to facilitate big ticket projects so that they can be cited in a do state and create wealth for our people and diversify our economic base. The commissioning of the CCETC Oceoma power plant will be the catalyst for our industrialization. The project will make ready and available electricity possible for manufacturers. It will provide power to critical government assets, including street lights, government hospitals, the state secretariat, government house, the Samuel Obamidia Stadium, which has now been switched on, and other key public buildings, including the State House of Assembly. We are on course on the Benin River Port and the Edo Enterprise Park projects, as the Edo Production Center shows signs of things to come. The Edo Modular Refinery, which was the signature of all eyes this year, as our partners on the project made immense progress are on course to commission the plant, which will play a significant role in re rec recalibrating the state's economy. This project has offered us a chance to be a leader in building modular refineries with the fabrication yard that is currently av available in this facility. Security. Mr. Speaker and honorable members, security has become a major challenge for us in Edo State. The breach of the two correctional facilities in our state after the hijack of the NSAS protests by hoodlums is a very clear indication that we have a major challenge. This breach led to the escape of almost 2,000 prisoners, and this has led us to undertake a rethinking of our security arrangements. As a state, we will now have to take on more direct responsibility for our own internal security. This means that we will increase significantly the resources that we need to deploy to security and organize our communities to participate more in, security, in securing their areas. The Nigerian police force has just completed the training of the first batch of 900 out of the 2,000 shortlisted persons for community policing. With these developments and the employment of more public works, uh, public safety volunteers, POWOV, we, will, we are optimistic that we will be able to secure the state. In the outgoing year, we beefed up the operations of Wabaizigan with the deployment of speed and gunboats in the River Rhine areas to protect the people and government assets in those areas. Road infrastructure. With a commitment to drive economic expansion, we prioritize the, the development of road infrastructure in the outgoing year. However, with the shocks suffered from COVID-19, we were unable to do only we were only able to do so much. The contractors and their workers had to stop work in compliance with COVID-19 shutdowns. We are glad that they have now resumed and we have been given assurances that they will take advantage of the dry season to make quick, quicker progress on all their projects. Institutional reforms. Mr. Speaker, the reform of the civil service and bureaucracy of government has always been our priority, even before the advent of COVID-19. With the pandemic, 
Well, it, it, this reform is even more urgent. We are rebuilding the civil service so that they can energize the engine of government to deliver service to our people. We have started the process of creating a high-performance civil service. The Chief John Odige Oyegu Public Service Academy is now open, and we have hired experts to commence work to review the processes and training required by our public servants. We are restructuring government to support and digitally enable and deliver services to our people efficiently. To strengthen our local government administration, we have also built the local government staff training center in uh, Bekuma, which Akokwa Edo local government, which was in a dilapidated state. We have strengthened the operations of the Edo State Internal Revenue Service through the Edo Revenue Administration, uh, uh, Revenue Administration System, which is redefining the way government collects and manages its revenue. Agricultural development. We recorded improvement in the agricultural sector with, incursion, with the incursion of new investors into the state in furtherance of our vision to make agriculture the mainstay of our economy. With the very transparent land management system which we now have in place through the operations of the Edo State Geographical Information System, Edo GIS, a lot more investors are taking advantage of our rich and fertile land to do business, growing investments and in the state in commercial farming. I am pleased to inform you, Mr. Speaker, that the Edo Oil Palm Initiative which we partnered in conjunction with the Central Bank has now taken off. With the allocation of almost 40,000 hectares of land to, for, for cultivation to about six firms that have now started land preparation. In partnership with the Nigeria Incentive Based Risk Sharing System for Agricultural Lending, NISRAL. We have leveraged the CBN Commercial Agricultural Credit Facility uh, Scheme, CATS, to expand cultivation of cash crops pulled across the state. The Edo Food and Agricultural Cluster in Eho, Uhode, has benefited over 1,300 farmers. The, uh, <coughs> Mr. Speaker, let me now proceed to the budget estimates for the year 2021. The size of the budget for the year 2021 has been put at 153 billion naira, which is a 9.7% increase compared to the 2020 revised budget of 139.8 billion. This budget comprises of 94.8 billion for recurrent expenditure and 58.6 billion for capital expenditure. Mr. Speaker, you will notice that the recurrent component of this budget is much larger this year. And as I'll explain in the course of this budget, it is to help us deal with the social and economic consequences of COVID-19. The total receipts of 153 billion expected for this fiscal year comprises of 71 billion, which we expect to receive from the federal government and FAC, 36 billion from our own internally generated sources, we expect 9.8 billion for aids and grants. Most of them have already been finalized. We expect to raise about 15.3 billion as loans and 13.8 billion as capital, as capital development fund receipts. We will carry over from this year a balance of 7.5 billion, which will be available for spend next year. With the FAC FGN, the, the receipts, 
for this year, which we estimate at 71 billion, was 60 billion last year. And this means that we are anticipating about a 23% increase from what we'll receive from federal allocation. Even though oil prices have traded as low as $28 per barrel, but on a good note, we, the markets rallied yesterday on the news that a new vaccine has been found for COVID-19. So we expect that oil prices will, will remain at the projected level of an average of $45 a barrel for, next, uh, for the year 2021. Even though that is the expectation, our budget is based on a price of $40 a barrel, which is $5 less than the projected average. We also expect a, an improvement in VAT components of FAC, given the expected positive growth next year. We will be accessing loans of up to $15.3 billion to make up for um, the to make up for the expenditures, particularly um, in the areas of supporting uh, of supporting the weak in our in our society. Given the expected three percent growth in GDP, we expect GDP growth in absolute terms for the country to move from two point three five trillion this year to two point four trillion next year. Mr. Speaker, the 1.5% tax on GDP ratio, is t which we are operating in Edo State, is still low. But we are targeting aggressive reforms in revenue collection and management so that we can grow our tax to GDP ratio by, to up to 6% by 2024. That is, the, what we are collecting as taxes relative to the GDP of Edo State is still very low. It's still at 1.5%. And we see a lot of room to increase that ratio. Uh, we expect that within the next four years, we'll have moved that ratio from one5 to 6%. Also, 70% of the grants of $9.8 billion, which we expect next year, is as a result of the stimulus packages which the World Bank and other agencies have created particularly the uh, SIFTAS program by the World Bank, uh, which documentation we have completed now. 15.3 billion loan receipts are from credit lines from the World Bank and the Central Bank, which are targeted at development projects in agriculture, education, and rural development sector. Mr. Speaker, a lot of our projections are based on reality. As we speak, we have gotten the approval, I received the approval of $75 million from the World Bank to support our education program. And some of this money will be available to support this project next year. Mr. Speaker, we have put in place structures to ensure that the fiscal deficit established in the budget is below the recommended deficit ceiling in order to ensure a positive solvency position for our government. You will recall that in collaboration with this Honorable House, we have designed a unique instrument through which the state government can attract private sector funding targeted at key infrastructural projects. Thank you for this watching was done in a manner end. that does not yes. place any heavy Please, burden on the state government's this balance video, sheet. Don't forget to give me our a combined efforts like, working with this house leave have your tossed, below, let us and don't also to, forget uh, to subscribe. Uh, let us to be able to syndicate 25 billion of so private sector funding of, of which I remain your humble girl, about 13.8 billion of TV. that Till will be available your for spending next year. Bye bye. I love you all. I want to thank the leadership of this house for working closely with us to achieve this feat. The 94.8 billion recurrent expenditure estimate in 2021 represents a 24% growth from that of the year 2020. The main driver of this growth is the increase in allocation of 
for salary payments and pension contributions. Like I told you, Mr. Speaker, next year will be a difficult one. But we, as a government, must put in place measures to lighten the burden of our people, particularly the vulnerable. We will be in, in hiring more people into the civil service because we need to. The civil service is quite depleted. Salary um, pension payments will go up because we are witnessing more retirements and retirees. And therefore, these coping with these payments have led to an increase in recurrent expenditure. Mr. Speaker, the breakdown of the allocation in the, for the various sectors are as follows. For the administrative sector, we will spend 8.7 billion. For the economic sector, which will include roads and infrastructure, fiscal and urban and regional planning, and economic growth and, and, uh, and employment enablers, we will spend 36.7 billion. For the social sector, which is health and education, we will spend 12.7 billion. And for the law and justice sector, we will spend 0 0.45 billion. What will be our focus in the year 2021? The 2021 budget is exclusively pinned on robustly responding to the dislocations caused by the coronavirus pandemic, while building a workforce for the future in a bid to make Edo great again. With these in focus, the 2021 budget is primed at strengthening the state's healthcare system across board, sustaining the gains we have made in the educational and social sectors, and providing needed stimulus to drive food security, supporting the weak and vulnerable in our society, and actively engaging our youths. It is pertinent to note that these targeted investments are on the state's most valued resources, its people. The bulk of our spending is on our people. And as a government, we strongly believe that to truly build and sustain a vibrant and productive state, we must first boast of a thriving, capable population, particularly the youths, buffeted by the right systems to sustain their existence and livelihoods. This budget is a statement of our resolve to keep our people alive in, the, in a world that is ravaged by disease and despair and equip our young people with the right tools to navigate their survival and realize their full potential. Much as we would have loved to pursue the development of other critical sectors, particularly infrastructure in the state, we are convinced that, the inv that investment in our people, protecting them from the pandemic, and ensuring their health, uh, their health and safety is the first step to truly uh, for them to truly survive these perilous times and to give a do state a head start as we forge a new alliance and path to progress in a post-COVID world. The budget shows how we intend to demonstrate this resolve. We are spending $20.8 in education. We're spending $6.1 in human capital and civil service reforms. We are spending $12.8 in pensions and gratuities. We are spending $1 billion to the state health insurance scheme. We are spending $10.3 billion to health care. And we are spending $9 billion in physical, urban, and regional planning. Mr. Speaker, education still remains our biggest expenditure item and we have no regrets for it. But we are targeting our spend in, a, in education slightly differently. Taking into cognizance the fact that the quality of education underpins our developmental aspirations, our target in strengthening the educational system will not be compromised. In a sense, we'll be committing 12.9 billion to a do best program we already have the funding from the World Bank. This will sustain the gains we have made 
and ensure the rollout of the program to other sections of the basic education scheme, specifically to JSS. To further institutionalize the EDOBES program, I recently launched what we call Edo Star, which is the Edo uh, Teaching Fellowship Program. This is a three-year unique fellowship program designed for teachers and aspiring teachers in primary and junior secondary schools. The Edo Star Fellowship Program aims to train and groom a new generation of school teachers who are passionate, technologically savvy, trans transformative, and socially conscious about nation building through education. The program will be administered by the uh, SUBEB in, in conjunction with the Ministry of Education, the Edo State College of Education, the Teachers Registration Council of Nigeria, and our technical partners. I'm pleased to inform you, Mr. Speaker, that the adverts have since gone out, and I was informed yesterday that over 30,000 people have applied for those teaching jobs. Our expenditure in basic education will focus on reconfiguring the infrastructure in schools to ensure compliance with COVID-19 containment guidelines. Uh, TVET, our vision to make a do great again lies strongly in building a viral and productive youth population. We will therefore be re replicating the success at the Governance Science and Technical College, JSCC, across the state, building the necessary manpower to drive our industrial growth. In 2021, we shall commence the construction and equipment of three other technical colleges in the other senatorial um, areas of the state. Civil service capacity enhancement. To make Edo great again, we need to focus on our people who are our most cherished assets. Though we have embarked on far-reaching programs to retool the civil service for efficiency and productivity in the last four years, the progress we have seen has buoyed us even to pursue more systemic reforms. In this regard, we will be injecting more resources in enhancing the capacity of our civil and public servants, which includes training packages that will restore the pride of the service. With the completion of the Chief John Oyegu, Odigia uh, Oyegu Training Academy, we are set to collaborate with local and international partners on the top of the range short and long-term courses that will fix challenges with quality of service, efficiency in the workplace, and hitches that in effective workflow. Our target is to make the Edo State's workforce the envy of all in Nigeria, bestowing the workers with tools and skills that stand them out to make for a better work-life balance and assure better service. We, to achieve this commitment, we will commit $6.1 billion to inject requisite skills into the civil service to drive sustainable development. Mr. Speaker, one innovation we are very proud of is the Edo State Health Insurance Scheme. Gleaning from the success we have made in Edo State from the introduction of the contributory pension scheme, through which we are now able to manage our pension, uh, our pension areas and our future pensioners, we decided to embark on the Edo State Health Insurance Scheme. And we want to thank you for helping us pass the law to establish this agency on a timely basis. As we brace from the strain on the healthcare sector by the coronavirus pandemic, we now have a workable model for responding to demand for affordable and comprehensive health care services. This is in line with our plan to roll out the Edo State Health Insurance Scheme. With the scheme, Edo people will, by, would, by contributing a meager sum, have access to quality health care across the state. Aside that this will reduce your, the out-of-pocket expense which people normally pay on health care, it will provide a robust base for affordable, quality health care across board, and it will also attract private investments into the state and unlock the potential 
of the sector to respond to the health needs of Edo people. In the area of primary health care, we intend to strengthen the critical institutions and systems required to effectively provide affordable and quality health care service to our people, particularly at the primary, uh, at the, in, the, at the, in the communities. In the light of this, we are committing more resources to facilitate the primary health care centers, PHCs, which operate across the state, and so that they can have access to medical care uh, for low income and lower middle class households in the state. We are also providing hazard allowances, procurement of medical equipment, uh, and personal protective uh, gears for workers in these centers. In supporting a robust response to COVID-19 pandemic, we will be reinforcing the structures to support provision of effective and efficient medical care at the local government areas. This will be done through the provision of infrastructure at the PHCs and general hospitals with a view to providing response to our people. Physical, urban, and regional planning. Commencing in January 2021, Edo State will begin a very ambitious urban and regional planning process. This also includes the Edo State Economic and Social Master Plan. This 30-year plan will assist us, amongst others, to deal with the current challenges of planlessness in our cities, which is now leading to huge urban slums. And it will help in our urban renewal and redevelopment initiatives. Mr. Speaker, we've also outlined in this budget measures for livelihood restoration for our people who have suffered severe hardships as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and the recent uh, um, protests which emanated from the NSAS protests. We have uh, enunciated of programs on agriculture to improve livelihoods and food sufficiency for our people. And also entrepreneurship and technological innovation to help our young people. We are emphasizing public works and introducing the maintenance of our roads and also maintenance of public buildings. I want to also inform the House that we have decided to separate the agency and we will be coming to the House shortly to give you a bill establishing an agency that will solely be responsible for public buildings and maintenance of such buildings across the state. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank you and your members for giving me the time to present this long and uh, hopefully not boring budget to Edo people. I would like to thank this honorable house for your unwavering support to the executive arm of government. You have indeed provided the right atmosphere to continue to work with the executive for the progress of Edo State. And you have given us and continue to give us the impetus to sustain the bold reform efforts which we have decided to undertake in the interest of our people and the development of our state. Let me also use this opportunity to thank all our traditional and religious leaders for their continued support and prayers, particularly during this very difficult year. Their support for our programs, policies, and reforms have gone a long way in ensuring the successes which we have recorded thus far. We will continue to count on their wise counsel to guide our path as we march forward to, to our all-round prosperity. 
to our youths, trade groups, professional bodies, and the entire citizens of Edo State who are the bastions of our support. We appreciate your loyalty. We appreciate your, uh, your unalloyed commitment to the progress of Edo State and trust that in this my mandate to lead for the next four years, we will, working with you, effectively change our society. Mr. Speaker and honorable members, it is now my pleasure and honor <clears throat> to present to you the Edo State 2021 Appropriation Bill in the sum of $153,403,800,000. Naira and six Kobo. And the details of the budget proposals for your consideration and kind approval. I thank you for your kind attention. You may step I want to say this. You start messing words. You have shown to our generation that you are a dependable leader. At the beginning of the administration, just very shortly after, you show to a dopeness that you were among the best. But we are clearly going to see from what we are seeing on a daily basis that you may emerge as the very best. We have seen the great words of Dr. Samuel Obebuja, Professor Andrews Ali, amongst others. We hope and pray that in the near future, your name will rank amongst that. Your Excellency, without missing verse 2, we want to commend your deputy governor, your number two, and your backbone. We tell him to remain steadfast and strong for the delivery of good governance. Your entire team, especially the Secretary to Government, a decent gentleman, a repository of knowledge, and God has given him the grace to guide many of us. And we see his tireless work. We commend you, Mr. Secretary. Sir. The entire government team I want to thank you, Chief of Staff, Commissioner for Budgets, our former Speaker, the Special Advisor now, and other Special Advisors there, Commissioners. Then let me now go to the State Party Chairman. Mr. Chairman, a former Honorable Member at the Federal House of Reps, we specially give you this thanks for what you did for those states at the appropriate time. You will also go down in this way. As I will play the role when you need it. You and the entire PDP family, may God bless you. Furthermore, if we do not say that someone who is doing a decent job is doing, you may go into despair occasionally, Mr. Governor, waking up to think, am I really doing the right thing? We want to tell you on behalf of the good people now that what you have been doing in government house and from your house and your office that you are doing very well. We are touched 
on every step you take. Take it for example, sir, your response to the COVID challenge, <coughs> both in education and in the attendance to government duties. We are delighted. How you were able to manage your states, pay salaries as at when due, and meeting up with government obligations. That dovetails again into your early presentation of budget in an election year is a marvel. That in spite of what we all went through, you had time with your team to sit down and say, at the second week of November, you are already presenting your budget. We give our hearts and hearts to you. We are indeed very grateful. You are alive by the time to do work and we will collaborate with you. Your Excellency, on the second term, I want to tell you that the reward, the reward for good work is more work. Every local government in the two states, because as we are here, we represent the entire 18. Sir, what we are looking forward to is that they become construction sites. All of them. We know your ability. We know what you can reach out to. Because we know that in your time, this budget will continue to increase. By way of capital, you already started it, but for the COVID challenge, your capital uh, provisions were far ahead of the current expenditure. But for the recent, which has affected the entire world, some European countries are about to go to the second phase of shutdown. But you have been able to manage the economies of this state. Sir, I want to say that in all this, we, the Edo State House of Assembly, we are poised to collaborate with you, the entire honorable members. Before you came in this afternoon, we will share our avowed commitments that we are going to solidarize with your government. Now, it is not by engaging the executive in uh, legislative rascality that makes the House of Assembly a viable house. It is by understanding what the executive wants to do and being a part of it for the good governance of the state. It is not by making name or newspaper throwing them out at the executive or any of the agencies. What we want is early information as to your programs and agenda. We want to assure you, on behalf of Mr. Speaker and the entire House, that we will not let you down. We are proud of you. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. I want to sincerely thank the Chairman, House Committee on Appropriation, and the member representing Akoko Ebutu to please usher.